You might have been hearing a lot more about SPACs in the past few months, in the past year, and even though they've been around for a really long time, a lot of people still don't understand exactly what SPACs are. They're capturing the minds and the wallets of a lot of investors as the stock markets hit new highs, so we're going to dive into SPACs in this video. We're going to break down what a SPAC is, how they're able to fund and merge with private companies, and also some of the things that you should be cautious about if SPACs are something that you're interested in getting invested into. There have been a lot of examples recently of SPACs and companies going public through a SPAC, like Playboy, the Nikola Scam, Virgin Galactic, SoFi, and a lot more. So we're going to talk about all of those by the end of the video. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how this all works in the very confusing financial markets that we're hoping to break down here on Quintox Money. A natural progression for some companies is for them to go public or have what's called an IPO or an initial public offering. And a lot of times, this process is done so that they're able to raise additional capital to fuel the next stage of the company's growth. During the IPO process, a company will sell either additional shares or founder shares to the public and to institutional investors so they're able to raise money. And what's in it for investors, if they're actually buying these shares from the company, is that they eventually are gonna hope that the stock price that they're buying at during this IPO is going to appreciate in the future, increase in value, and they'll be able to actually make money from buying shares today as they go up in value in the future. For many companies, the IPO is the way to go in terms of raising additional funds, but there are some negatives to the IPO process just in the sense that it can be a really time-consuming process where you have lots of regulatory filings, lots of internal audits, you have to get investment bankers and underwriters involved, which can come with pretty hefty fees that you then have to pay out of the funds that you're actually earning or the funds that you're raising through the IPO. And for many companies that want to avoid this long process and avoid some of those fees, this is where a SPAC comes into play. So a SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. And when you look at a SPAC, it really is basically a blank box. It's a company that doesn't have very many assets and is created for the sole purpose of eventually merging or acquiring another company. So basically, when someone starts a SPAC, there's really nothing to it. There's no product and there's no service that they're offering. It's just meant as a way for them to raise capital from other investors, which we'll talk about in a second, so that they can then use that money to acquire a company and basically replace the SPAC with this private company that they're now going to take public through the SPAC offering. The person who sets up a SPAC and actually gets the legal entity created is called a sponsor. And there's a couple well-known sponsors that you might have heard about. Chamath Palihapitiya is a former Facebook executive. He's the founder of Social Capital, and he's taken a few companies public in the past year through SPACs. And then you also have Richard Branson, who is also taking a company public through a virgin SPAC with 23andMe. So all of these sponsors are basically setting up the legal entity or setting up that blank company so that they can eventually go out, raise money from investors, and then acquire a company to then replace with that SPAC as we already described. Once the SPAC is formed, the sponsor will go out and try to raise money from institutional investors with the hope that in the next two years, they will be acquiring a private company to then take the place of the SPAC. They'll use the money that they raise from investors to then go buy that public company. And once they've actually gotten some of those funds or they see what interest they're able to get, the SPAC will then actually go through the IPO process. And so because the SPAC is going through the IPO process and they really don't have any assets, they don't have product or service that they're offering, there's much less regulatory paperwork that they actually have to go through. The timeline is actually a lot quicker for them as well. And there's just a lot less overhead and fees that are associated with it. So basically now what you have is this SPAC, this blank check company or this empty box going public with pretty much nothing to offer other than the hope that eventually they will be acquiring another company to take its place. So that allows them to go onto the public market initially, have money eventually that they're going to then go buy a public company with, and they spend the next year, two years, usually there's about a two year commitment to actually go find this company, come to a deal, come to an agreement, and then allow that other company to merge. What you end up with is the SPAC now listed on the public market, listed on the stock exchanges, the sponsor has raised capital, and the sponsor is now going to go out to all these private companies. It's probably got a couple targets already in mind. It will try to negotiate a deal with them and come to terms that both parties can agree to so that the SPAC is then able to acquire this private company with the funds that's raised and take the private company public through this new offering of this new vehicle known as the SPAC. The big value in the SPAC in many cases, since it has no assets and no real tangible value, is that it's able to streamline the process of taking a private company onto the public market without necessarily having to go through all the hoops and all the fees that might be associated if you were to go through the standard IPO process. And you might be asking, why is there more talk about SPACs and IPOs now compared to maybe a few years ago when you were also watching the financial markets? 
And a lot of times when the markets are at all time highs, you'll see a large increase in the number of IPOs and the number of private companies that want to raise additional funds. And this is because as most people know, it's much better to raise money when the markets are good compared to trying to find new money to help fuel your business when markets are bad or the economy is bad. So in a case when the markets are at all time highs, companies wanna take advantage of this so that they can actually raise the most money at the best valuation rather than having to do it at a time when it might be disadvantageous to them or they might actually make less money by going public or having to raise more funds. A SPAC is an easier way for private companies to do this so they don't have to worry about potentially missing out on the high market by having to go through the long and tedious process of the IPO regulations and the IPO filing process. This is also why you see a lot of electric vehicle companies going public or at least exploring the option through SPACs because investor sentiment with EV companies is extremely high and a lot of the prices for currently public EV companies has appreciated quite a bit over the last few years. You have EV companies like Fisker Motors, Lucid Motors, Hylian, and also Nikola that are taking advantage of the SPAC to allow them to get access to these funds a lot quicker without having to jump through all the hoops that would typically come along with the IPO process. The first thing to be aware of is that a lot of the requirements and a lot of the disclosures that most companies have to go through when they're going through an IPO are not always needed when you're going through a SPAC. So there could be some regulatory filings or certain things that companies are leaving out as they're getting acquired or merging with a SPAC that you would actually be able to know as an investor if they were going through an IPO. The second thing you should be aware of is the actual compensation that a SPAC sponsor gets by taking a company public or merging with a company through their SPAC. So the SPAC sponsor or the person that's originally going to actually raise the money from institutional investors to then go acquire the company, they usually get about a 20% cut of the deal. So that's a pretty hefty fee right off the bat and it's not tied to performance at all. So even though I'm sure there's a lot of really great people, really great sponsors out there, it's still something to be aware of that there's not really a performance-based metric. Once they actually take a company public or actually acquire or merge with a company and put it into the SPAC, they get a big payday and you as the investor just have to hope at that point that the company will continue appreciating in value in the future so that your stock price goes up and you're able to see a profit or a gain in your investment. Because of these paydays, although again, this is not necessarily something that I'm sure happens all the time and it really will depend on the ethics and the morals of who the SPAC sponsor is, you could get into a situation where you might have a SPAC sponsor that's more worried or more concerned with getting their payday than buying a reputable and fundamentally sound company that's going to continue appreciating in value in the future. And one more thing that I'll share about SPACs, which is a bit more complex, but I also think it's important to note, is something called a public warrant. So if you are one of the institutional investors that's investing in the SPAC before a company has actually been acquired, a lot of times you'll get what's called a public warrant. And this is basically just giving you the option to buy more shares in the future. It's almost like a perk for you actually putting in the risk of your money to the SPAC before something has actually happened. So for you, let's say the company typically will go public at $10. So you are able to potentially buy more shares of the company at $11 or $12, whatever that number might be. But it's basically giving you the option to buy more shares in the future if the price has appreciated. So it's just a bit more of a perk that you're able to take advantage of. But this is, again, only for the institutional investors that are actually investing in the SPAC before the SPAC goes public, rather than if you're investing in the company once it's already public. Thanks so much for being here as we talked about SPACs. I hope you were able to learn a little bit about how this works compared to an IPO. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could scroll down a little bit and hit that like button. Leave me a comment and also subscribe. It really helps me on trying to grow this channel. And I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.